Hey, so a little lower energy video following today's video about specialization. Uh, on a personal note, I'm in a place in my career where I need to specialize. I need to choose a direction and just kind of own it, <laughs> dive in deep and just become that thing. Now, as I've mentioned before, building some stuff on the side, great. Will that be monetized in the next five years? Maybe, I, I hope, but the truth is it might bring zero dollars in, ever, okay? I could write a dozen more books and it might bring in zero revenue. I just, I wrote them for me, they're diaries, you know what I mean? It might never work out and that's fine, that's fine because A, I'm trying, I'm enjoying the time and I'm doing it for a noble purpose of supporting my family, okay? I'm not out there to make 800 bajillion dollars on some new series or, or like the next Facebook. It, no, 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 no. I'm doing it because I enjoy it and because I think it can help my family. Simple as that, right? And, but I've, I've got to consider a realistic point of view about these things. If they do bring in no money, well, I, I hope you're employed <laughs> because you got kids, bro. <laughs> they need a roof. They need food. My wife has needs. You know, I like roofs and food as well. So you should probably also be employed if you don't have other streams of income from your entrepreneurial ventures, right? <laughs> Just talking to myself out here. And I noticed as I've gotten older, my propensity for risk has gone down. And it might be an age thing. I mean, I'm young, okay? I'm in my 30s. But I think it has to do with the fact that I have kids. I mean, oh, duh, Luke, you had kids. People get less risky when you have kids. I, I'm with you, okay? But I think of past mistakes that I've made. And they're learning opportunities. I've grown a lot. But I chose to move my family out here to Arizona on on nothing, like on a few thousand dollars of savings for a job that paid only commissions, that's a nightmare to my brain now. I, I don't understand my thought process back then. I don't understand why I thought like, oh, I'll just, I'll figure it out. And I did, I did figure it out, but not with that specific career, not with that job. If anything, that was craziness. And it all worked out, and that's a story for another time, but I would never do that now. And now it's, it's like, I've got to do good enough at the job that I'm at. Uh, I've got to do good enough <laughs> to maintain our lifestyle. It's not crazy, okay? We have one car. We go on vacation, never. We don't, <laughs> we don't eat out. We love cooking at home. We eat really well here at home. Uh, it's, it's a very modest lifestyle in that regard. Um, but I've, I've got to maintain that because... Have you ever tried to downgrade your lifestyle in a relationship? It's not an easy conversation, okay? But my wife's awesome, okay? Don't, don't watch this, honey, and get mad. Uh, you are amazing. But if I moved us to a one-bedroom shack somewhere to cut rent by a fourth, it would not go well. Do you see what I mean? There's a certain amount of maintenance that has to be uh, maintained. <laughs> so thinking about employment. Thinking about specialization, as the video earlier today was talking about. Play to your strengths, Luke. What are you good at? What do you like to do? Just like I said in the video, right? What do you like to do? Hmm. Well, I had a lot of fun this year cleaning the data of the, the project that I'm building. Cleaning data was actually really fun, which is a weird thing to say because I've heard people in the industry say it's a total slog, but it's like 90% of what they do. It was just really interesting to have this data set, figure out how to make it something digestible, right? You have a bunch of null values, you have unstructured data, and you've got to put it into a relational database, into a table that is actually interactable, <laughs> something that you can actually use, something that you can turn into useful insights. So clearly I like working with data, okay. Does that mean that I would enjoy being a data engineer. Now, oh my God, I'm so overestimating my ability right now. I'm nowhere near in a data engineer in skill-wise, right? But the basic idea is you take data from here and you move it over to here 
and in that process, make it available to your whole team. Right? All right? Pretty simple. That's kind of neat. And on the other side of that coin, right, you have a, a machine learning engineer, someone who's going to be working with that data, cleaning it, um, using it in models to um, train those models to actually build something that's uh, useful to the company, whatever it is, insights or projections or a neat little language chatbot, whatever it is. Um, that could be interesting too. The, the whole dashboarding part of it, you guys have heard my rants about front-end engineering. Uh, I don't know if I would do so hot as a data analyst. Uh, turning data into something that's useful, right? Like, here's a nice graph. Look at the company's revenue, how it's gone up, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of neat. Visualizations for what you're looking at, those are kind of neat. But given my lack of a propensity for front-end engineering, I don't know if I would be the one you want really making a bunch of dashboards to present at a business meeting. Like, here, look at these cool metrics. And then someone's gonna raise their hand and be like, where's the pie chart? And I'd be like, you guys wanted pie charts? Like, maybe, maybe, just maybe that's not for me. It might be, but maybe not. So, cool, data's great. Data's good and dandy and I'll probably keep using that in my spare time. But will I make a career of it? Probably not. Let's think about strengths, right? Think about strengths. I'm pretty good with networking. I'm not vendor specific. I've dealt with Cisco, I've dealt with Fortinet, and Ubiquity. I've never dealt with PFSense, but I want to. I would love to make a home router, you know, out of a, like a Raspberry Pi or something. That just would be fun, being a little tinkerer, you know? <laughs> Tinker with a bunch of home projects and not rent a modem from whatever ISP I got over there. Uh, <laughs> that would be a cool little project, but is that something I wanna do for the rest of my life? Be a network engineer, set up, maintain, troubleshoot networks for companies. If I had to, I would. Same way I would be a data analyst. If I had to, I would. But networking to me is like a, a means to an end. The most cool thing I've done with networking is using Terraform, actually. It's a, a tool dealing with cloud infrastructure, okay? It builds the infrastructure, it tears down the infrastructure. There's some other stuff that it does as well, but that's the gist of it. It's your construction crew, right? With cloud stuff. Um, the coolest thing I ever did with networking is you put all the details into what's called a YAML file. It, it, just imagine a text file and it has some details for what you're building, right? And I built out a network in that text file, in the YAML file, and I just write a little command. Hey, uh, Terraform up, you know? And on AWS, it made a network. <laughs> they called a VPC there. And you go to your, your AWS login, you go to the little submenu for VPCs, and there it was the network that I had written down in a little text file. Uh, how cool is that? That is so cool. And you can split it up into little subnets. And sorry, that's the second coolest thing I've ever done with networking. The first coolest thing is make a VPN. Okay, VPNs are awesome. And that brings us to this week's sponsor, no one. Uh, <laughs> no, making a VPN is connecting two places. It, it turns two places into one place. In this case, this is an IPsec tunnel, right? So you take one network and another network and you make a tunnel between them, you connect them. So now those two places are one place. I felt like Doctor Strange when I did that. I felt like a wizard because <laughs> you now everything on those two networks can talk to each other, I mean, more or less. There's some other things you have to do with like routing tables and access control groups and security groups like there's a lot of stuff that goes into it but essentially you made two places into one and notice how i just i drop some some jargon's not really the right word some um, terms related to networking there with security and access control and whatnot i know what those things are how exactly do they relate like is this an interview right now uh uh <laughs> Because it's not at the tip of my tongue that I'm not immediately explaining it, you can see I'm not a networking expert, 
but I know those things exist and I know I'm going to have to include them in order to make things talk. So do I find networking interesting? Yeah, sure. It's, it's cool. Clearly I'm fascinated by it, but do I want to do it my whole life? Mm. Mm. Necessary evil and evil is a lowercase E. I mean, it's, it's great. Networking's great. And so you move on to another generalist thing, right? Server administration. Can you spin up a server using whatever operating system you want? Yes, absolutely. That's the, great. Not a problem. What is a server? It's just a computer. Don't, don't let us IT kids mess with you too much, okay? A server is just a computer. And managing those servers, that's pretty cool. I mean, what does that actually mean, though? Managing servers. Are you like dealing with a bunch of different VMs or containers that are running or... Are you orchestrating those containers? I mean, that, that could mean all kinds of stuff and unrelated to server management, right? So, yeah, servers are cool and dandy, but it's, you don't really specialize in servers. You specialize in the stuff that's running on them and managing that. So you have a computer running, great. If there's a problem, can you troubleshoot a computer? Great, you're now help desk. That's good, that's good. But you're gonna be thinking about like what is running on that computer? Is there a program that has been containerized? We need, it's, uh, it's in Docker. <laughs> so uh, Docker takes a program and, and in another text file has instructions to turn that program into a little package. And that package is then put on the computer and run. If you're a Windows user, think of like a, a .exe. You know, think of um, think of a binary in in Linux. They're all different things, okay? Uh, between a container, which is what Docker turns the program into, and a binary and a .exe. But you'll get the general idea. So a container is put on a server, and then it runs whatever program you made, because all of the requirements are contained, haha, in the container. Um, and so there's technologies that go into getting those containers onto the servers, and then you manage those containers. Are they still running? Did the program air out? Do we need another server that hosts another container? Because traffic, say it's a website, is too heavy, so you have to spin up another container on another server. Like That is also another tool that you can specialize in called Kubernetes. Um, and now you've gone from server management into cloud stuff. DevOps, um, SREs deal with this, um, but server management really becomes cloud architecture, cloud engineering, cloud XYZ, whatever, because that's where a lot of companies are hosting their, their infrastructure on. Uh, it might be that the company is using a hybrid environment, right? So they have computers there on site and they have computers in the cloud which isn't really, a computer. it's a computer in a data center somewhere, but it's in the cloud. It's someone else's computer. Um, so you don't, like you can get your Linux plus, right? But uh, that's a certification, but you're not a server manager. That's not a thing. You, it's like, what are you doing with the servers? Does that make sense? I feel like I've, I've meandered around this a lot, but you don't, there's no like, computer expert that we hire. No, there's there's like the cloud architect. Um, and that's fun. I Like I was saying earlier with the networking thing, using Terraform would be another tool that you would use to make those servers and, and uh, orchestrate different deployments. So that's not necessarily true because the, um, the CICD tool, I'm jumping all over the place, that is the thing that would bring up Terraform and add more stuff in, and, and then really you're dealing with Kubernetes with that too. So, sorry, let me click myself. I don't want to go into DevOps. <laughs> That's a good way to put that. <laughs> because I've dealt with that in a company and it gets overwhelming but, but the caveat on it, 
is that I was in a role that was quickly overwhelmed. Where I was working at the time, I needed a junior. <laughs> there was, my hands were in too many pies. As a generalist, haha, -ha, uh, I was in charge of this and that and everything on site. So I was help desk for the site while dealing with the networks, while dealing with cloud architecture, while dealing with the robots we were setting up. Well, it was too much. It was too much to do. So my view of the DevOps space is just chaos and panic everywhere. And <laughs> At the time, I was learning these different tools and trying to figure out how it even worked. A lot of the work I did with cloud architecture was clicking around AWS's UI, which is not how you're supposed to do it at all. Uh, it, there's easier ways, right? So when I think about automating your architecture, um, when I think about automating your workflows and the CI CD pipelines and whatnot, it's really cool. It is really cool but i have bad experiences and so it it makes me like shy away from it I'm like i don't know so i'm definitely i definitely am looking forward to employing those different pipelines and whatnot in the stuff that i'm building i'm going to need to i don't want to do a lot of this manually um but i it's like if you get bucked off a horse you know you you gotta go ride a horse again uh, so that you're not afraid to get back on the horse. That's good, I didn't know that about myself. I didn't know I was nervous about DevOps. Thank you, camera, <laughs> and all you wonderful listeners out there. Um, honestly, I think for the security that I was talking about, to supply my family with a good life, and to maintain our lifestyle, to make sure my kids are taken care of, I, I'm honestly thinking of just leaning stronger into systems administration. Why? Well, jobs are hiring. People need access management, meaning like you get a new user, you have to apply a certain security group to them so they have access to certain things. Um, you have to maintain those networks that are up, all the different servers, haha. Uh, it's kind of a catch-all term in IT. You could be doing all sorts of things. And it plays to my strengths so far, and the specialization doesn't cut off a lot of those options. I was talking about, in the specialization video, I was talking about being nervous about closing doors. Well, you don't have to close doors just yet, because you, you specialize in a platform. In this case, it'll be Microsoft, right? Because that's the majority of, of sysadmin jobs up there. Um, so you specialize in Microsoft, then you get a job, and then what opportunities are available to you? Are you focusing more on the networking or more on the cloud? Are you focusing more on programming? Then you can go in that direction. But considering my family, I should probably just get the, the Azure administration cert, show people that I can do it because Experience on a resume is great, and that is that is the arbiter right there. That is the arbiter of truth, if you will, uh, shit saying that you can do a job. But a certification validates that you have the skills, okay? Um, and it helps you stand out a little bit. And given that my past few roles have not dealt with any kind of sysadmin stuff, it would be helpful. Um, so it's like long term, I'll probably be drawn into cloud more towards that DevOps side of things. Sure. But in the short term, we want to move from this higher cost of living area into a lower cost of living area and the jobs there are sysadmin. So focus on that. I've got to cut it short. <laughs> I need to go tend to some family stuff. But hopefully this has given you some idea of like how I would go about organizing what to specialize in. Set up a camera and talk to it. No, but just evaluate yourself. Like, what do you like doing? Where are your strengths? And dive into that. See what you can do. And good luck. Take care of yourself. Bye.